Well, thank you for your welcome. Thank you for your prayers during this last week. We pray that as we meet together, we might know God just meeting with us in a special way. Do bring your greetings from our church at Friars Green in Warrington too. It's off rugby season, so there's no comments on that front, I suppose. I'm sure Sue would come up with some, I'm sure. Obviously, today we come together on Remembrance Sunday, which happens this year to fall actually on Armistice Day. So our bulk of our meditations, our thoughts will be upon that. It will be upon that. Technology has let us down in the past. I'm hoping it's not going to let us down in the present. We're going to play, we're going to play the sounds at the end of the war. So this was the armistice in World War I on the 11th hour of the 11th day when word had been passed around that at 11, 11 o'clock they would cease fire. I don't know whether you've ever heard of this, but when I heard it, I was deeply touched. Psalm 121 says, I lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence will my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. Lamentations 3. This I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Isaiah chapter 40. Those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. And Micah chapter 6. What does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God? Let's pray. Lord, as we remember today the cessation of hostilities 100 years ago, Speak into our hearts and our minds, we pray. May we learn from the past and not forget either its horrors or its brave men and women. We pray for all who in bereavement, disability and pain continue to suffer the consequences of fighting and terror in our world. We remember with thanksgiving and sorrow those whose lives in the world wars and conflicts past and present have been given and taken away. Guide us in your mercy and speak into our hearts this day we pray. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 
Psalm 46 says that God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in times of trouble. Many of you know that I work in an Anglican church during the week running a coffee bar for them in the centre of Warrington. I had a young Romanian chap come in last week and we've currently got an exhibition on about the end of World War I. And he turned to me, he said, can you tell me, why do you celebrate war? Why do you celebrate war? And he'd interpreted what he'd seen as celebration of conflict and war. I said to him, we don't celebrate war. We remember the end of war. And the end of that war that was meant to be the end of wars. And yet we know that the heart of man is fallen and prone to such as this. He understood a little more. I had a couple of Germans in and they were looking around the exhibition. And the lady didn't have such good English, but the gentleman did. I was talking to him and I related to him about the Romanian and the comment that he'd made. And the German gentleman said, no. He said, we must remember, lest we forget, and it happens again. And he's right. He's right. The true story is, is told about a young man called Albert Penn. Penn was not long married, and his wife Florence had just given birth to their daughter when he went to sign up. They were both devout and sincere Christians, having first met at a small Wesleyan chapel in their village, where he ran a Bible class for boys and she ran a Bible class for girls. He had sought to enlist before, but Albert was refused because Florence was pregnant. Come back when the baby is three months old, they said. He did, but his time was to be short. When baby Mary Estelle was just 11 months old, he lay dead somewhere in the fields. Penn died on the 30th of October, 1917. He was just 28 years old. His body was never found, but his name is listed amongst the missing soldiers on the memorial at Tyne Cot near Ypres in Belgium. Five days before he tragically died at Passchendaele, a member of Penn's Bible class from home was being stretched away on the battlefield when he saw Penn. The details of his encounter he relayed back to his family and his family recorded them, lest we forget. Penn's granddaughter, Cynthia Hardiman, now 71 years old, relates that my grandfather was standing outside in an open field on the battleground with a Bible in his hand. He had just finished talking to the young soldiers he then led them in singing the hymn, Rejoice, the Lord is King. She says he was still at heart, the leader of a young men's Bible class to the very end. In that situation, he was still preaching. He was still encouraging young fellas and trying to keep up morale. I like to think that in that terrible time, he didn't keep the faith, but the faith kept him. The story of one person lost on the battlefield just over a hundred years ago. Sadly, we take the sacrifices of many men and women who served in the forces during the wars for granted. 
We too easily forget the price of the peace that we enjoy. I think Remembrance Sunday is one of the most important services in the Christian year. A time when we stop to remember lest we forget. But it's also one of the hardest services to speak into. I'm not old enough to remember the Second World War, never mind the First World War. I'm young. But my father and my mother, they remembered it. My wife's mum and dad, they served in the war. So today, we take a few moments to corporately remember. What do we remember? We remember the sacrifice. We recall the millions, millions of servicemen and women that gave their lives in both wars. I understand that the death toll among serving soldiers in World War I was 230 dead for every single hour of the four and a quarter years that the war ran. 230 dead. They gave their lives so that we might enjoy peace today. We also remember the other conflicts that have continued since. The Korean War, the Falklands War, two Gulf Wars, Iraq, Afghanistan, and many others. The ability to remember is a wonderful gift of God to mankind. Some of our memories are happy. And we recall wonderful experiences, but some of our memories are sad. And we weep as we remember them. We do well not to hide them away, not to forget. Because it is good to remember those who fought, who made that sacrifice, lest we forget. We come today to give thanks, to say thank you to all of those who did lay their lives down. But we come today too to share in the love of Christ and to know the consolation that he gives. As we sit in church today, these thoughts of sacrifice should bring back to us memories of that ultimate sacrifice. That sacrifice that Jesus made upon the cross at Calvary. In John's Gospel, Jesus puts it this way. It says in John chapter 15, Greater love has no one than this, that one lays down his life for his friends. Jesus gave his life not only for his friends, but those who were at enmity with him as well. As God, I wonder if you've ever thought, Jesus had no need to experience human suffering. He could have simply wiped the creation away. He could have started afresh, but he didn't. For our sakes, he lived as one of us. He experienced what it was to be humiliated, what it was to be beaten, what it was to be loved, what it was to be rejected and despised and forsaken, what it was to die. Not for his own sin, but for ours. Man's evil, that which we call sin, has separated us from God since almost the beginning. Jesus died that we might be reconciled. Dying in our place, paying that price that was rightfully ours, the perfect one for the imperfect. Dying for you, dying for me. 
Jesus reconciled man to God through his death upon the cross. This reconciliation is a gift that we can receive simply by asking Jesus into our lives. But as the Apostle John put it, for as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become the children of God, even to those who believe in his name. We're told that Jesus died for all. But that some stand condemned because they have chosen not to believe in the one whom he has sent. As we come towards a close of this service, we remember the words of former Bishop of Birmingham, Bishop J.L. Wilson. He was a Japanese prisoner of war in the Second World War. And he recommended three thoughts for us to carry to our hearts on Remembrance Day. Those three thoughts were these. That we should be thankful for the sacrifice of others. That we should be sorry for human sin and evil. And I guess that means not just looking at others and other situations and saying, how bad is that? But recognizing that we ourselves are all too prone to fall short. And recognizing sin for what it is. And thirdly, he said that we should be dedicated to work for peace and justice in our world. To see outworked in our lives those words of Jesus when he calls us to love our neighbor as ourselves. Just before we pray, it seems fitting to share some words that are upon an epitaph in northeast India at Kohima. I guess it sums up partly why we're here today. It says this, when you go home, tell them of us and say, for your tomorrow... We gave our today. Let us pray. Father God, we pray for all those who suffer as a result of conflict. And we ask, Lord, that by your Spirit you will pour out your peace upon our world. that you will beat the sword into plowshares. We remember those servicemen and women who have died in the violence of war, each one known to you, O Lord. And we pray for those who even now mourn for them. We pray for all the members of our armed forces who are in danger this day. Remembering family, friends, and all who pray for their safe return. For civilian women, children and men, whose lives are disfigured by the terror of war, and the war of terror. Call to our minds in penitence, O Lord, the anger and the hatreds of humanity that cause such as this. Help us to love rather than hate, to make peace, and not war. 
We pray, Lord, for the peacemakers and peacekeepers who seek to keep this world secure and free. And for all who bear the burden and privilege of leadership, political, military and religious, asking for gifts of wisdom and the resolve to seek reconciliation and peace. O God of truth and justice, we hold before you all of those whose memories we cherish and those whose names we will never know. The forgotten soldier. Help us to lift our eyes above the torment of this broken world And grant us the grace to pray for those who wish us harm. And as we honour the past, may we put our faith in your future. For you are the source of life and hope, now and forever. We ask all of these prayers in the name of the only one, who died for our sins, the powerful and grace-filled name of Jesus we pray. Amen.